So are you someone who cannot let your internet die on you because either you're in a competitive gaming industry or you're a streamer and you don't want your internet to die while you have a gazillion viewers or maybe you're just someone who needs that speed. This video will help you achieve uptime, speed or both depending on how you set up your network. So currently there are three different ways you can approach this. So there is the built-in Windows one, there is a software one by Speedify from Connectify and number three is hardware load balancing. We'll be looking into load balancing at a hardware level in detail but I'll show you snippets of how to do the other two in case you're curious but I don't recommend those first two methods. So the first one is the built-in Windows method. Now in my opinion the built-in Windows one is pretty finicky. All you need to do is have both of your connections connected so say Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Then click on the network icon, go to network and settings, change adapter options, then right click both of your uh, network adapters one by one then go to properties, IPv4, go to advanced, then uncheck automatic metric. Set it to 10 for this example for both. So the idea is if they both have the same metric, then Windows will prioritize traffic exactly same. So if you say open Google Chrome and open a website, meanwhile they open another tab and open another website. So one of the tabs will use one connection and the second tab will use the second connection. That's the idea. That's it, done. If you're lucky, the Windows gods will take over and you'll have a load balance connection straight from Windows. But in my experience, it didn't work. Now the second method is to use software on Windows. Now you can download Speedify. Just select your connections and click start and it will combine the connections. So what's the catch? Now the catch is you have to install Speedify on all devices that you need it done which might not be possible, say for example, a mobile phone can only have a Wi-Fi connection or LTE. If you have two broadband connections coming in to your house, you would definitely need some sort of hardware load balance. The other catch with this method is that you have to pay a subscription to Speedify or Connectify, which is about $100 a year, which is a bit steep when you compare it to the cost of a load balancer, which is about 40 to 50 US dollars to start, maybe 80 for a high-end one. Method 3, which is using a load balancer router. I'm using the TP-Link R470T Plus. I have it linked in the description. So with this method, we'll be using a network level load balancing, which means all devices on your network can access both or more connections if you have it set up on the load balancer. In this example, I'll be using two connections. Now, as I said, with step one with this method, you need to have two internet connections. It cannot be your phone internet because unless you have a way to connect it to the load balancer, you cannot add it. Luckily, there are some routers with USB ports which you can add 4G or 5G modems and then you can have it, but that would defeat the purpose of load balancing in my opinion. So the best way to do it is to get two high speed broadband connections which you can actually combine and use every day. Step two is to actually get the load balancer. Now, as I said, I'll be using the R470T Plus and that's the, like the base model, which has a 100 megabit link for ethernet. If you have faster connections, say 200, 300 megabit, you might want to look at the gigabit model, the R680T Plus. Step two is actually to set your modems, so your ISP modems that were provided to you to bridging mode. Now, if you have a triple PoE connection, which means you enter a username and password to log into your internet, then you don't need to do much. But if you have a static IP or dynamic IP, copper cable, stuff like that, then you need to set your router to bridging mode for stuff like UPnP and port forwarding to work properly. Step three is pretty simple. Log into your load balancer, configure the number of WAN connections you have. I have two. So go to WAN1, enter my username, password, input the upstream, downstream bandwidth. It's optional, but I do it anyway. Hit save, go to WAN2, repeat. The final step is to go to the transmission tab and you can click on load balancing and then enable load balancing and enable application-based routing which means that stuff like games won't malfunction because data is being sent from WAN 1 and WAN 2 together. Games will actually use either of those ports as required. Step 5 is to just use it. Do a speed test, check it out. In my case, I'm using a 40 megabit down and 20 up connection and a 20 down and 20 up connection. Now, my reasons for using these two connections are to have always on uptime 
not just speed but you can see I'm getting 60 megabit down and 40 up in the speed test shown. Now there is more you can do with the load balancer like policy based routing. For example I run a Plex server that I need to go through a public IP that I own so I need to use it 111 for example. So I've set the load balancer that if I'm going to Plex or if someone is connecting to Plex from outside they will use 111. I'm showing you the settings on the screen. At this stage if you just wanted a failover slash a load balance connection you're done. But there are a few more things to consider with load balancing. So this particular model that I have actually supports combining up to four internet connections. So you can have two primary, two backup, or you can use all four of them at the same time, depending on the cost of the internet. You can have three connections and one 4G backup. So when it comes to customization, Bob's your uncle. You can do whatever you want with the config to your personal liking. Also, by installing the load balancer, you're not losing out on any of the server features such as virtual server and NAT. So you can get port forwarding, port triggering, UPnP. You can configure all of that as required. But if you don't know what it is, just skip it. Now, as I mentioned before, the model shown in this video, the R470T Plus, is actually limited to 100 megabit link on ethernet. So you would be limited to maximum 100 megabits on this particular router. But there are routers out there from TP-Link themselves that you can actually get gigabit or more speeds as required, depending on how you're using it. If it's a small home and office setup, you might be okay with 100 megabit. But if you're anywhere near enterprise or business grade hardware, then you might need a gigabit or 10 gig, depending on your requirement. You can look at brands like Microtech, Cisco, etc. to get better options for enterprise grade hardware. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you did, hit thumbs up. Share it with a friend who is an internet crazy person like me. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get updates on my channel if you like this kind of content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.